When we roll out in the desert to test guns, the crew and I, sometimes I'm solo, we have a mixture. It's purely random. Maybe, for instance, we have three AR-15 style of rifles, maybe an AK thrown in there, 7.62-39. And these days, subject to change, several 308 AR-10 style rifles or 308 battle rifles thrown in the mix as well. We have a lot to do out there. It's a lot of work. There really isn't a lot of time to fool around because every gun needs to get a fair shake at testing. One of the things you come away with in shooting these various calibers out there in the high winds, in the long distances that we have to deal with, more or less real world, uh, or I should say real shooting conditions, is how dominant, comparatively speaking, the 308 is. It's eye-opening, and I've said that before, but you come away after shooting these guns, you go, this is what I want to go to war with. <laughs> I don't want to fool around with a 55 grain 223. Granted, 77s are a different creature. 762, 39, great gun. But when I stretch it beyond 200 yards, 300 for myself, uh, I lose enthusiasm for it greatly. Not these guns. Both of the guns on the table can range out to seven with a proper shooter, proper load. Very careful shooting, it just does not happen all by itself, but they are capable. Thank you very much. When problems arise, I will, if SAWC permits, take a 308 battle rifle, or in this case, AR-10 style of rifle. There you go. On the table, and that's what we're going to discuss right now, is just such an option. Live Free Armory, small company, assembling AR-10 style of rifles, as you can see. This is the LF-308 hybrid model. 18 inch barrel, 15 inch handguard. They make other ones as well. Kind of with a hunting bent because they're heavier and both have 20 inch barrels. First up, according to their website, all this is subject to change, of course. The models could change, the names could change, but I saw a PR20. They're saying that's nine pounds, 14 ounces. Let's just call it an even 10 because I find that most manufacturers undersell their weights by about five ounces from what my scale is saying. We'll just call that 10 ounces, or, or I'm sorry, 10 pounds. The Hunter model they're saying is, uh, we'll call it nine pounds even with a 20 inch barrel. All of them are available in Cerakoted colorations. You're just looking at the very cool bronze Cerakot, which we've been using a lot on different guns here in the shop. Tungsten, olive drab, FDE, and black are also available. So it's kind of a, roll your own AR-10 style of uh, assembly that you'll see on Live Free Armory's website. A la carte as I call it. In this case we're talking an AR-10. So you'll click and add to cart, order it, ship it to your FFL, and voila! You have a LFA Live Free Armory 308. Thanks to the TMP, by the way, who suggested I review this because he has been watching the show, he knows I'm big on SAWC, I've been down on several heavy AR-10 style rifles, AR 308 battle rifles. A good example of which would be maybe the very excellent but extremely heavy H&K MR762. The SIG 716 would fall in the same category. And he goes, dude, check out LFA. And for the last six or so months, I have been trying to secure one for review. And it was a pain in the butt. Finally got one thanks to the entity who loaned me this one. Sorry to say I put some wear on your gun. So sorry. <laughs> Dudes, if you loan me your gun, I mean, it goes out in the desert. It, it gets ran. We're not, we're not at a range. It just, you've seen it. Watch Soldier Boy. It is what it is. We're shooting from improvised positions. The gun will get dropped. We do our best to treat it nice, but dude, it's, it's just going to get worn. In the background is a standard of measure. It's coming out, coming out of my own personal systems. It is a cast member, as I call it here in the show. And that is a very superb Smith & Wesson M&P 10. Standard of measure for a lot of reasons. I think one is value, two is accuracy, three is reliability. Uh, it's just a really, really excellent gun. Five hour rifling, super accurate. Uh, reliable until you put a can on it. I talked about that in the review. Most of these DI guns, I'll say this again, here with the LFA are gonna have problems with a can. You'll have to tune them one way or another. Super quick, that's a Battle Comp 762 on this one. Standard handguard, Troy metallic battle sight there since it's mounted on a gas block to resist uh, heat buildup of which this gun can create a lot. 
Uh, interestingly, it's not a super thin barrel. It goes thick under the handguard. Watch my review. Forged upper lower, hollow sun, Magpul, Magpul, MFT, stock trigger, coated. Whew. Standard measure. And here's why. Let's, this is like a prize fight. And by the way, I'm not trying to compare these against each other. But interestingly, this is a, a, a Hall of Fame player for all the things I just mentioned, but also as we're going to see right here, right now, for weight. Now consider this. This is with Optic 20 round magazine. This is a 308 AR10. No sling, of course, but look at where it's weighing. Eight pounds, eight ounces. Eight pounds, eight ounces. I'm not going to throw this one on the scale right now, but naked I did, and it was eight pounds, four ounces with a metallic aluminum handguard, which this one does not have. Also an 18 inch barrel. Well done, LFA. A company who gets SAWC. What I really wanted to secure for you guys and test was their previous model that had a forged uh, components. I think it's a forged lower at least. I'm not sure about the upper. I really wanted that one. And I'll, I'll just insert my mini rant right here. I know a lot of 308, and I'm calling 308 again interchangeable with 7.62.51, but AR-10 style rifles are using, if not most, not this one, billet uppers and lowers. Uh, I don't Thank necessarily you. have a problem with billet, but usually it ends up being heavier and it's giving me features I really don't care about. Like fashion, it's more fashionable, they're milling in certain look. I don't care about this. I, I like this. So I like standard AR-15. I want it to be as light and as strong as possible. Forging will always beat billet for strength, says me. I like it. Especially when you're handling a major caliber like a 308. That being said, this is the one I got. This is being reviewed. Uh, I think I covered their other models super quick. Let's POU. I've covered several times. I'm going super light on it because I I really expect you guys, my audience, to have watched the other reviews, and we're just adding, we're building, blocking this philosophy, so I don't have to go over it all the time. At the top, by the way, you will see the playlist, which is having these uh, guns added to it all the time. I do keep my mini videos organized in playlists, so all you have to do is go to my main channel page. Look for a playlist that interests you and start uh, browsing. And maybe you'll see the gun that you are interested in, or maybe you own it. That is often the case, and you'll see what my opinion is on it. And here we go with LFA. Uh, philosophy of use, hog gun, of course. To uh, attack the pestilence in the southeastern United States and other parts, I'm all for that. I think 308 is an awesome caliber for that. Preferred. I think other calibers do well as, uh, almost as well. I shouldn't... I think other calibers are also a valid choice if you need more rounds, but dude, like I said at the outset, 308, man, it, it dominates as far as a sapper goes, and that's semi-automatic precision rifle, which I consider these guns to be. Uh, there's other more dominating calibers, of course, like 300 Win Mag, but in my book, they're not really representative. They're not really realistic. Uh, nobody can afford to shoot them, despite all the hype and crap you read in the magazines and online. Um... I, I know very few people that even own 308 battle rifles or AR-10s. I, I meet you guys all the time. I ask, hey, what do you got? Uh, I can't really, in recent memory, remember anybody that's got them. A lot of, a lot of AR-15s, almost exclusively a few AKs out there. And uh, But there's a lot of interest in them, so that's why I keep reviewing them. But I don't meet a lot of dudes that have them, much less a bigger caliber than 308 is my point. Police team rifle for the LF-308, would I use it? Uh, yeah. There's a minor asterisk there, but yeah, it'd be a great police team rifle. That's basically where you're just sitting up on a roof and you have to make one or two precision shots. Usually these will be within 100 yards according to whatever, I don't know, force implementation protocol that may be in effect for your job. Anti-pirate rifle, I've always loved that one. That's I introduced that philosophy of use with a, the FNAR. Uh, to basically, honestly, that's not a joke. It's to repel borders in the high seas. Uh, I think the 308 is much more effective and makes a lot more sense than an AR-15, even with 77 grainers uh, and even an AK, because it has standoff capability, super quick. Think the same thing I let off with. Let's say you're shooting out, at least putting rounds on the pirate boat, not necessarily with superb accuracy. You know, it's going to be very difficult. Because your ship's going to be rolling, there's going to be rolling, but at least you can connect and put some fire on them at about, I don't know, 400 yards. And then maybe 
take out an engine or something like that. Uh, it is still an ongoing problem last time I checked. Piracy on the high seas. Uh, recreational, yeah, if you can afford to shoot it. And then WRL, yeah, if you can afford to carry it. It is a big system. Even these guns, which are weighing right around uh, just over 8 pounds, naked, of course. This, by the way, with the scope you see on it now is 9 pounds, 13 ounces. With the scope that I had on it that you'll see in video, it was... Uh, no, where is it? 10 pounds, 2 ounces with bigger glass on it and a single piece mount. So yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of what I've been seeing. Once you put a major scope uh, on it, that's what's going to weigh. Uh, let me jump ahead to, uh, because I need to roll in. I don't like just to show you the tabletop. I need, and I want to make this short as I can. I need to tell you about reliability. And the LF308 did mostly good. Uh, the first outing, I did put a can on it, and as a caveat, I did the same thing with M&P-10, and it also had problems. A DI gun, in my testing experience, and that's all it is, as soon as you throw a can on it, there's going to be some issues. You change the volume of gas, the impulse is different. Like I said earlier, it's going to need some tuning. The way I do it on some of my guns is I'll put an adjustable gas block on it, and I'll spend time with it. Dial it up, dial it down, which is usually the case. Make it reliable. Uh, hopefully you don't have to change your gas port size it, sizing on These are both direct gas impingement guns. They're not piston guns, of course. AR-10 style rifles, like I said. And you'll have to tune it. The LF-308 had lots of problems with a can. It just did, and you'll see them. And uh, I wasn't really, I don't know, disappointed. I was kind of expecting it. I was like, well, I, was, I threw it on there in the Thank off chance. That maybe just by some miracle it will run well. Uh, it really didn't, and if I remember right, it was not with just steel rounds, of which I shot some, but also brass, it's issues. So I peeled the can off, and then uh, we're talking reliability and track record here, and it shot mostly good. It did, and I used uh, some crew out with Soldier Boy Drill, had them shoot it, that's where this wear came in. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Just kidding. And uh, it was mostly good, but we still had some stoppages. Now, this isn't unheard of with AR-10s. In my experience, and I'm getting more than a little bit of experience in the type, it's rare that I see an AR-10 run 100% oh, all the time. Grass, huh? All the time. I, I've had stoppages in M&P 10s, too. I, as I remember, is with a can. But I think even without a can, there was like one or two. It, it just happened. So, was it 100%? Nope, it wasn't. Let's get back to philosophy of use. Team rifle. I said with a little asterisk, and the asterisk is you have to test it with the ammunition you will use. So if you're gonna put any of these guns in a very serious purpose, like your law enforcement officer, SWAT team guy, uh, you need to run a lot of rounds through it and make sure your gun is good. And if it's, it's choking on anything, especially if you put a can on it, you need to have the armor look at it and you need to tune it and make sure it's good. So as long as you do that, I'll recommend it. Same with you guys, the civilian types. Uh, AR-10s are just a a different creature. It, you change magazines, sometimes some guns won't like certain mags. And by the way, I the magazines that I run with all these guns out in the desert, I would love to tell you that it's a completely planned. Dude, it's all I can do logistically to hang on to the process that I have. So it's generally a hodgepodge. I'm just grabbing this, a representation of every type. DPMS Steel, PMAG 25 round, PMAG 20, Brownells 20, uh, and that's what you'll see. So it wasn't mag related. You'll see it with all different types of mag. Uh, I'm talking about the stoppages. It wasn't so bad where I was like, oh my gosh, this thing is failing the test. It was just airing out again. Something happened. I'll show you that. That's what happened. So that's reliability. Do I think you could get it to run 100%? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. Again, you're going to have to load test it. I would say this gun was more reliable. M&P 10 in our testing. I mean, it well, like I said, with cans, with the cans when we had it. All right, let's get going. Got a rip. SAWC Design and Ergos, 4150 steel barrel. They say it has a QPQ finish on it. I think now it's being produced by a company called Ballistic Advantage. It has a 1 in 10 twist. You will see an accuracy that it produces some pretty stellar groups. That tells me it's a high quality barrel. It is a mid-length gas system, as you can see, under this handguard. And I, I like the barrel. I like the profile as well. It's thicker than the M&P 10. Like I said, the M&P 10 is skinny post gas block, prior to the gas block. It's actually 
uh, pretty stout. I actually love, love the per profile of M&P 10. This one's a little bit thicker. Uh, the gas block, incidentally, is not pinned. It's with two screws. If that bothers you, then have fun going, going ahead and drilling that and cross-pinning it. <laughs> but in my experience, I've had good luck with uh, set screws, dimpled set screws, and I just use blue Loctite. Okay, so from the dude that I loaned this from, sorry I lost your muzzle device. <laughs> So embarrassing. I looked everywhere for it and I'll show you a screenshot or a picture or something. It's actually their own, uh, well they're calling it their own, it's, uh, where is it? One of their LFA muzzle rise eliminators, is what they called it. It's basically like a Tiger Tank muzzle device with vents out the side, made of stainless steel. And when I saw it, I knew I wanted to run a can, you know, just for the heck of it. And I don't like those anyhow because they blow your ears out, especially when we're filming from the side. It's very unpleasant. So I peeled it off. Later on, I put on, of all things, an M&P 10. You'll see that being shot. Muzzle device because at the time I didn't have anything else. This one here is a Griffin 762 comp. I wish I had had that at the time I shot it. So don't read into that. It's just me trying to eliminate the noise and ran a can on it. I have no doubt at all, having shot those side baffling muzzle devices even on 308s that they will compensate very well they'll be extremely loud you get it hand guards now live free armory from my understanding which is quite imperfect i am new to the company it is a small company is changing components so they're basically a component manufacturer of ar10s so again drop down menu i want this I want this i think this is a utg pro hand guard it is 15 inches long i think I could be wrong. They have used some other ones, like I think it was a Matrix handguard. I don't really mind the UTG Pro. The one thing I will say is it appears to be made of very soft 6000 series aluminum because here we are shooting it from. Uh, I told the guys, sorry, I told the guys to put something underneath it so this wouldn't happen, but it happened. They're shooting on top of a steel target at range, and so it's going steel against aluminum. Of course, aluminum softer. It's going to gouge out a little bit. If you ask me, it just makes it look freaking cool. Uh, battle wear, real wear and tear. But it shows that this is kind of a softer aluminum. Um, that's it. It's a low profile handguard. I like it. I think for what you're paying for this gun, you're getting a pretty good deal from what I know. Key mod, as you can see. I love key mod. That is my fave. Full pick rail. Uh, there you go. Now, was this my first choice? Well, I looked around. There's really not that many super light, ha lightweight handguards. Maybe I missed some. Uh, I don't know. You know, and I didn't really test this. Is it going to rotate over time? There is something that is rotating back here. I'll show you. But it's easily fixed. I don't mind it. That takes us to the lower. I think I read somewhere on the interweb that this is forged. Uh, if I'm thinking of the right gun, I have several guns. Actually, it's not this one. I'm sorry. It's a different one. No, no one was talking about this one. This is billet. Uh, it's a good looking receiver. I kind of did my rant already. Billet versus, you know, forged. Uh, so it's going to be billet upper, billet lower. Kind of like DPMS. DPMS does the same thing. Nickel boron bolt carrier group. Uh, most of this gunk came out of, uh, like I said, with the suppressor. Uh, I did wipe it down somewhere in the testing. It was fully lubricated in case you're wondering. It's funny, like, if something has an issue, like, oh, you should have lubricated it. Dudes, every time I take a gun out, nowadays, it is completely lubricated. I'm giving it every possible chance to do well. Ah, uh, crap. I guess I will take this out, because you guys can look at it. I love nickel boron coating, by the way. I absolutely love it. I'm going to put a glow on for this. Finally getting smart. Uh, high lubricity, it just last there's other coatings that are equally as well are equally as high quality you can see there's some tw25 on there some grease still left over from testing look at this bolt carrier this is a dpms charging handle i think so it definitely needs an extended charging handle on it uh i would i would that'd be an upgrade that i would put on there asap uh, that's all I'm going to show you on that, just for time. And then a quick look in here. It's a Rock River Armory, I believe, RRA two-stage, five-pound-ish, more or less, trigger. Hey, I like Rock Rivers. I think they're good. I think there's a lot of snobbery about triggers, and a lot of guys say, well, I would never trust my life to Rock River. Um, okay, 
you know, it's each his own. I have Rock Rivers on several guns, and I've never changed them. I have no problems at all with them. The feeling I get then is so they're trying to keep the price low. When we talked about UTG, I think that's what this is. And they don't really mention it on their website. If there's one thing tip I'd give them is guys like to know exactly what they're getting. So mention the handguard brand. Mention individual weights. That's where we are now in the market. So maybe LFA can add that information uh, later. Standard AR-15 controls. Nothing to talk about there. Talked about the trigger. Uh, but what I was going to say, it's kind of a price point, uh, high quality enough, but some things are price point. The Ergo uh, hand grip, that's kind of a price point thing. The charging handle, that's kind of a price point thing. And then we go here, and I was telling you something came loose. It's this right here. So just a castle nut. It needs to be tightened. It wasn't staked. Uh, for the record, I don't have a problem with that. And this is something I'm getting experience on. This is a Rogers Deluxe 6 position buttstock, and it's pretty good. It's okay. And that's a mil spec tube, I believe, that it's on. Uh, is it my favorite? I, I wouldn't take it off. It's definitely good. Good enough, I would say. Uh, instantly, they do offer another trigger option on the website. I forgot to mention, I think they call it, uh, I don't have any experience with it, Elftman Curve Trigger. Something like that. Uh, and let me show you this side. Standard AR, charging handle. I can't remember if I used that. Uh, I don't think it was failures to go in the battery. I think it was fine. It was just, I don't know, just stoppages. We'll just call it that. Uh, so that's track track record. Uh, accuracy, super quick. I have one target with me. I might have more. So I'll roll it in inset on the video. Oh, that's an MP10. So this is in the desert, and I would consider that to be pretty stellar from the LFA talking about barrel quality. Atomic match is not the fastest, but damn, is it is it consistent? So I do have a little bit of a flyer there, unfortunately, but other than that, it's a pretty good group. Like this one, look at that. So that's sub MOA group from the LFA, and that's real world. That's not range. That's off a polymer table. 168 boat tail hollow point. 175 gray match here. PMC not doing that great. Uh, PMC group here is not doing bad. That was a side in round. And Federal Premium 175 grain match doing fabulous, actually. I mean, you're, that's bolt gun accuracy. So they're doing a really good job on the barrel. Uh, let me show you. I did show you that MP10 just as a standard, super quick. That's SMB. Now, if I can get a, a sapper to shoot like this, FMJs, dude, uh, awesome. Awesome. And see here, I'm talking about the gas adjusting as I'm running with a can. And then I was testing the Brownells Max too. Great group here. I think that was all SMB. Leave it at that. So accuracy was excellent. Field strip is standard. Uh, no BUIS when we talk about accessories. Do you need it? Um, I don't know. I have it on my M&P 10 here. But keep in mind, this is a CQB rifle and it makes more sense. It is adding a little bit of weight. To this so if i peel the buis up off this this is a sub eight pound 308 combat carbine dude i'm running it on this gun for now i'll look into it uh charging handle definitely i'd leave the trigger eh, ergo's okay handguard uh, i don't know it's really kind of sixes to me i don't like how soft the metal is um what I like is lightweight, and that's why I stuck with a standard handguard at MP10, like I've said. Look into it. Muzzle device, you can change it. The thing that I always say is when you start changing stuff, you know, you look at the value equation. Next thing you know, you've bought a $1,200 gun, more or less, depending on what you, what you get. And now you've just added another $400 worth of accessories. Is it worth it? Get what you want right off the bat, says me. Uh... And I'll just leave that for time. Uh, value and options. I love uh, throwing in just a couple ones. MP10, obviously, uh, it's excellent. But there's others too. Super quick. We got the FN17S reviewed. DPMS LR308 that was reviewed a long time ago. Gen 2 might be reviewed soon. HK MR762. It's not an AR10. It's a piston gun. Damn, is it expensive and heavy? But I'll tell you what, it didn't choke on nothing. Can it? That is put a suppressor on it ran it nothing steel 100 percent brass 100 percent probably the most reliable 
uh, sapper I've shot today. M1A, bro. You know, I didn't forget about that. But these AR-10s have so much more versatility with optics and stuff. Pop P308, I've reviewed that one. The Bushy ORC, that's about the same weight. It's a basic polymer handguard. And I'll leave it at that for time. Keep watching that playlist, though. So I have other guns coming up for review. My overall take of the LFA to end the video is that it's very accurate. I love the accuracy, and I think it would be even better at a range. Uh, the I think the reliability was mostly good without a suppressor, but you're definitely going to have to check your loads. Maybe there's some tuning uh, that has to take place. Maybe to experiment with some buffers. Um, I, I hate doing that. I, I've always said out of box, it should just be 100% with steel, with brass, and my enthusiasm wanes when it's not. Okay, good trigger. Love the handguard setup, and the weight is reasonable. So it is a very valid option. Go to their website, Live Free Armory. Nothing fancy. TMC again. Another jam. Multiple jams.